guys, how's it going? Today I'm planting up two sets of containers for winter, both using extremely winter hardy things for the most part. This is the first set of containers right here. You can see I already brought some things out for them. And these I'm gonna keep pretty simple. You guys might remember I had these planted up for fall. They were so pretty and they lasted for so long. I'm really happy with the combination. So I put corn stalks in the back and those were my um, centerpiece kind of thriller. And then I had uh, hookera, ridbeckia, and some creeping jenny. All of those plants have been popped out, repotted, just in plastic pots that we could find in the barn. And they're wintering in the cold frame because I do have places I want to put them out in the landscape. Um, today I'm going to be putting a Black Hills spruce in these containers, which is a zone two. I wanted to talk to you. Let me show you the plant first and then we'll talk about winter container gardening. So there it is. Isn't that so cute? So Christmas looking. So let me show you the tag. So you can see here is zone two. That's the most important thing we're looking for for winter container gardening. And then uh, the size. So you can see it grows 60 feet by 25 feet. It is not gonna be happy in a container for long, but that's okay. I have a planned spot for these to go out in the landscape this next year, but it could probably live in a container for several seasons before you actually need to move it out. And they do like full sun, which this spot typically gets full sun. Um, right now we are at a weird part of the day where the juniper, like the very tip of our juniper shades it for just a minute and then it, they'll be back in the sun. So the rule of thumb for container gardening in the winter, you want to choose plants that are rated at least two zones colder than your current growing zone. I garden in a zone five. These are a zone two. So they're actually three zones lower than my current growing zone. So they can withstand way more cold than we get here, which is so important. Like, you, you know, you could put zone five plants in the ground and they'll be fine here, but you put them up in a container where they don't have as much insulation around them. And it just makes them more susceptible to winter kill or winter damage. Um, so that's what you want to shoot for when you're picking out things for your containers. And you know, sometimes we don't always get it. I do leave boxwoods in containers like I've got four of them I'm looking at right now uh, in my vegetable garden in terracotta pots which are like two no-nos um, and they've survived there for two years and I'm just willing to risk it on those because I like the way they look out there and if something happens you know I just know that it was my fault and I'll replace them and move on it's not a big deal um, but if you want things to you know, you want less risk, definitely choose things that are incredibly winter hardy. So I've already come along and filled these up with just a little bit of soil at the bottom. Then I'm gonna pop in my evergreen and I'm using the Espoma organic potty mix like I normally do. And then we're just gonna top dress these with pine cones, which I saved all of these from last year. I gathered these from underneath our Colorado blue spruce in the front yard. These come from underneath our pine trees that are right there. Um, so they've just been hanging out in the barn just waiting for their time to shine again. beautiful did that turn out I love it it's so simple and gorgeous it took one potted evergreen and some pine cones that's it it's not some over-the-top you know display that you have to gather a million things for which there's nothing wrong with that I am planning on doing that in a few of my containers but sometimes it's just nice to scale it down a little bit and do something like this and these plants like they could live in here for this winter and the whole of next season if I wanted them to or you can plant them out in your landscape. Um, these urns, I believe, are called the English floral urns from Unique Stone. I just got them in late spring this year and I really love them here. I think they're the perfect size. I would like to put like maybe a couple other small containers because um, this is a very big opening just to kind of flank and mask, not mask, but soften the beam for the arbor here. But this is just beautiful and I like the mixture of pine cones too. We've got some big ones in there and small ones. And these evergreens got a nice warm welcome to the garden because it's supposed to get to 56 today. Like I'm about ready to take my coat off. Um, it's been beautiful and the 10 day looks equally as nice. We're hovering right around freezing. Um, the other thing that's very important about keeping things over in containers is making sure to maintain moisture. And I know it's the last thing on our minds when it's cold outside. Uh, but today I'm gonna water these in and since we are still getting so warm in the day, so warm, I mean warmish, in 
the day. I'm going to be checking on these once a week. Once we dip into like actual winter, I'll be putting them on an every two to three week watering schedule where I will just come out here, toss a little bit of water on them just to make sure that their root balls do not dry out. All right, so now we're gonna head up to a couple of containers I have up by the Versailles garden and I've got all the stuff in the back of the truck. Look at that, quick little preview gorgeous stuff. So here's the second set of containers just flanking the opening to Versailles right here. These are the large containers I had in the openings to our back garden and I decided to move one set up here so that we could enjoy something in them throughout the winter because this is closer to the house so we'll actually be able to see them. And the other two I'm not sure what I'm going to do with yet. Um, but I'm sure we'll find a home for them. I think that these are called the Giant Palm Pots from Henry Studio. And it's looking like I haven't even taken the string off of them. Jeez. That's how they attach the tag to the pots. I think the other one still has a string too. I'm going to have to take that off. I missed that. Um, anyway, I've got some Fat Albert Blue Spruce. Kind of step back and give you a look here. I love these little trees. They're so cute. They also don't get enormous, like they get big, but not enormous like the other ones. These grow 30 feet tall and 15 foot spread, and usually the spread is what I'm worried about, not so much the height, but these are also a zone two. And then in the truck over here, I've got a couple other really beautiful things. First of all, I just bought some beautiful, beautiful hellebores. Look at that bloom. This one plant right here is what spurred on this entire project today. We went down to the garden center as Aaron, Benjamin, and I do almost every single Saturday. Usually any family that's here in town in the area, we all meet down there and have lunch together and that's what we did. Benjamin got to play with his cousins and then I saw this walking down the sidewalk into the store and I was thinking, I need to have some of those and maybe I should plant up a couple of containers while I'm at it. Um, so anyway, this is what, this is what I blame. I blame it on the hellebores. So this is called Jesco. It's actually a zone four. So it's only one zone colder than where we're at, but hellebores do so, so well for us here. Um, it is blooming right now. The tag says it blooms early winter. So maybe this one has a little bit of a different bloom cycle than the others that I have. Um, so maybe we'll just get to enjoy it this late fall and early into the winter, but the foliage is evergreen. So even when the blooms are done, the foliage will still look nice. And then I've got a nice little area of hellebores underneath one of our lilacs up closer to the house where I plan on putting all of these kind of in like a mass group when we're all done with them in the containers in the spring. Next up are these white ornamental cabbage, which honestly, like <laughs> they're looking a little past their prime. Their tops are still really pretty though. So I'm just gonna kind of bury them a little bit deep. And I think there'll be a nice bright pop right below the blue spruce. And they'll really, I think, anchor the whole thing. And then I've got some needle point ivy, which is a zone three. So the only one in here that is not a perennial are the cabbage, but they're extremely, extremely cold tolerant. Um, so usually when we have a really cold night, like all my other cabbage have survived down to zone, uh, not zone, but uh, nine degrees already this fall and they still look good. Um, so they may look a little frosted and they may be like a little bit, like uh, not wilt, a little wilty in the morning, but they usually pick back up by the afternoon. All right, so I'm just gonna get these all planted and then we'll take a look. both turned out so pretty and the lighting's weird because the sun is a little lower in the sky and we still have full canopies of leaves. It got really cold really fast and it dried some of the leaves like froze them and then they dried where they're at on the trees and they're not falling down um, like on our locusts and willows and a few other trees. So anyway, these all look so pretty. I mean, here's the hellebore that started this whole thing today. Gorgeous with the blue spruce and then the the um, leaves of the ivy is just such a nice texture in here. 
then we've got the pop of the white ornamental cabbage which I actually ended up with more than I thought I had so I just popped a few extra kind of toward the back toward the trunk of the spruce I also think these will make a really pretty spring display the only plants that may need to be replaced are the cabbage uh, in that case I'll probably pop those out and put white pansies in but I just think it's so pretty. Aaron will be excited because he's got four more things he can put Christmas lights on. But I'm just so happy with how all four of them came out and I just wanted to show you guys um, and give you another option for winter containers other than you know just kind of the normal greens and branches and berries and stuff like that that we normally do which are all beautiful and I have some really fun ideas um, that I'm going to show you guys a little bit later on. Um, but anyway and then also just kind of knowing what to look for when you shop for evergreens or plants to put in containers that you want to have winter over you know look for plants that are rated two zones lower than your current growing zone and then just make sure to water them um, and I think you know most of the time I have really good luck with that so anyway thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one bye <music>